Well, some stunning claims of betrayal against President Obama from a wounded heroine of the Fort Hood shooting rampage. On that day in November 2009, then Sergeant Kimberly Munley was shot three times, confronting the shooting suspect, Major Nadal Hassan, along with her partner. After he allegedly opened fire on the base, shouting Allah Akbar, killing 13 soldiers, killing 13 soldiers, and wounding another 32. Now Munley, seen in this picture, uh, next to the First Lady, uh, she was the First Lady's guest at the 2010 State of the Union address, is now accusing the President of breaking his personal promise to help her and the other victims of this massacre. Trace Gallagher has the report. Trace. And you remember the days after the shooting that Megan uh, Munley, Kimberly Munley, was said again and again to be a hero along with her partner, really credited with stopping Nadal Hassan during this shooting. This video, by the way, is kind of graphic. I want to show you this. It was obtained by ABC News, and it kind of shows the chaos and the aftermath that Munley and her partner and others were dealing with, soldiers and police trying to help the wounded others, as you can see, kind of lying in blood. And then at the 2010 State of the Union, Munley, as you said, sat next to the First Lady, was very prominently placed. And now, three years later, Munley has been laid off from her base job. Remember, she was a civilian cop at Fort Hood, and she feels like she was used that night as a political prop for political gain. And she says the president broke his promise and that she and other victims have been forgotten and betrayed. Listen to her. Uh, betrayal. Would be a good word. Not to the, to the least little bit have the victims been taken care of. Um, in fact, uh, they've been neglected very badly. Now, Hundley's main complaint is that the U.S. government has not designated the Fort Hood shooting as a terrorist attack, but as a workplace shooting. And because of that, victims are denied Purple Hearts and wider access to health and financial benefits. 148 victims and their relatives have now sued the Department of Defense to get the designation changed. Among them, the other hero in this case, Sergeant Mark Todd. Listen to him. It's not workplace violence. It is a terrorist act. This man was following orders from Anwar Al-Alaki. He was performing his jihad. Yeah, the Pentagon has now issued a statement saying, and I'm quoting here, the Department of Defense is committed to the highest care of those in our military family. The Department of Defense is also committed to the integrity of the ongoing court martial proceedings against Major Nadal Hassan, and for that reason will not at this time further characterize the incident. Won't change the designation, that means, yet authorities have already said that Hassan yelled, Allah Akbar, before he shot at Fort Hood. The request was at apparently the behest of the American-born terrorist Anwar al-Awlaki, who was killed in a drone strike last year. And clearly, Megan, in the trial, prosecutors will lay out that email chain between Hassan and al to prove their case. But the designation will not change. Mm -hmm. At least not for now. Trace, thank you. Right. For more on these claims, let's bring in Monica Crowley, a Fox News contributor, and Kirsten Powers, also a Fox News contributor, and a columnist for The Daily Beast. Wow. So. What a turnabout for this, this woman, this heroine, who openly said she voted for Barack Obama in 2008. She wanted change. She was honored. She said it was a huge honor to be there next to the First Lady, bigger than going on Oprah, which she also did. And now she feels very betrayed, and she says she believes they used her for political advantage. Monica, your thoughts? Yeah, this is a really sad and outrageous story, Megan, and there are two parts to it. First is the personal betrayal that Sergeant Munley feels uh, because the president personally gave her his word that they would all be taken care of. So there's a bit of hypocrisy that she's pointing to in the president's broken promises. The second part of this, which is the bigger story, obviously, is the designation of what happened at Fort Hood as workplace violence, which is patently absurd. Major Hassan, for months leading up to this attack was passing out business cards that called himself soldier of Allah. He was dressed in Muslim guard, garb. He was carrying a Quran. He was increasingly radicalized. He was giving public speeches on the base to his colleagues talking about radical Islam, how to carry out the jihad. And of course, on the day of the actual attack, Megan, he shouted Allahu Akbar. And so he was carrying out this act of terror in the name of his faith, in yeah. the name of Islam. So it is clearly a terrorist attack. 
And what they're saying is, look, we just want proper medical care. We just want our benefits that are due to us, and we cannot well, get they're them getting as long medical as care. Stay, and as, they're they're as getting long. benefits, but there's a difference in the way you get exactly. care and benefits if exactly. you are wounded in combat or as a result of a terrorist Correct. act act versus just a veteran who didn't serve That's overseas, right. et cetera. That's so, right. Kirsten, here's the thing. The, the Secretary of the Army, John McHugh, comes out and says to ABC, which, which broke this story with, this, with the sergeant, to award a Purple Heart, which is one of the things they want, and they want this de declared a terrorist act, this, we'd have to declare this a foreign terrorist uh, element, this guy. But he says to, to declare this soldier a foreign terrorist, we're told that it would have a, a profound effect on the ability to conduct the trial. He seems to be suggesting this court-martial that's underway of Nadal Hassan could be jeopardized if they now start calling this terrorism. Uh, yeah, okay. Uh, square this with the fact that they just, with the drone attack on Anwar al who's an American citizen. They have no problem calling him a terrorist and killing him, but now calling this person a terrorist in the Fort Hood attack would make it a foreign terrorist attack. I mean, I, they, they've just completely lost me on this one. And I think that, you know, all the things that Monica laid out, uh, to, uh, you know, to say, well, this was clearly a terrorist attack, I actually would ar could argue it's possible that somebody could behave that way and just be kind of a nut job. Mm -hmm. What makes this clearly a terrorist attack is that he was in communication with Anwar al mm -hmm. who the who the president thinks is enough of a terrorist that he killed him with no due process. So, you know, I, so to me, that's a, it's an open and shut case. But why, There's no, the, you but can't that, have, both question, things right? can't why, be like, true. Then why won't they do it? I mean, why, why wouldn't we declare this a terrorist act? The guy's yelling Allah Akbar before he kills a, a dozen service members on an army base as they're about to deploy to Afghanistan, by the way. Why, Monica? Why won't they do it? Well, I'm speculating here, Megan, but I think there's some politics involved here. Remember, um, in the fir president's first term, he made a big show of saying that he was using the drones, as Kirsten points out, that we were decimating al-Qaeda, that al-Qaeda was on the run. And over the last four years, we know that that is not the case, that al-Qaeda is actually on the rise in places like North Africa and elsewhere. <laughs> so to have this kind of terrorist attack happen on U.S. soil, that kind of destroys the narrative. And it dovetails with what we've seen come out of Bengal. That was more immediate coming up to last year's election. But it, there is a real reticence on the part of this administration to call radical Islam by its name, to call acts of terror against mm -hmm. the United States and our interests by and, its name. And this guy, John McHugh, the Secretary of the Army, Kirsten, he also told ABC that he was unaware of any specific complaints from the Fort Hood victims, even though he's been yeah. named as a defendant in the lawsuit filed yeah. last November. We've had some of the victims on this show months and months and months ago outlining their complaints. How could he yeah, be well, unaware? Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, our government has done an abominable job in terms of taking care of all our service people, frankly, who have served, and that's that, that's another segment, I think. You know, but yeah. I, I, the, the the other the other thing that really concerns me about this is that the government was complicit, actually, in this attack because they had known for a year before that uh, the Fort Hood shooter was in communication with Anwar al-Awlaki, who, again, they killed for being a, such a dangerous terrorist. So, you know, they, they allow these people to continue to work with this person who was a ticking time bomb um, and ended up killing all of these people. So, you know, they, they, have, they bear a direct responsibility for what happened mm -hmm. um, and for those people that were killed. You know, that, now, that's, I got to run, but now some okay. Republican lawmakers are trying to push through legislation that would improve the status of those victims of Fort Hood to get them the benefits that they are entitled to. I hope so. Ladies, and thank no you more both. political correctness, as Kirsten points out. Thank you both so much. You bet.